silence your cell phones. If you have a child that starts crying or screaming during the ceremony, please be courteous and take them out to the hallway until they are quiet. As far as giving gifts, the graduates do not have Good evening, everybody. Wait a minute. Y'all waited the whole year to get to this point. I need you. We gotta get it to it. Good evening. Alright, let's get to it. Let's get to it. My name is David Johnson. I have an honor and pleasure of serving as the president of Merritt College. And I'm not afraid to say that this is my happiest day of the year. So I'm going to get into the formal welcome um, to say good evening members of the Board of Trustees, uh, Chancellor Jackson, uh, Merritt College faculty, administrators, staff, family, friends, and most importantly, the Merritt College class of 2023. But I am honored to welcome you to the Merritt College's 2023 commencement. Um, it makes me incredibly proud to see so many students improving their lives through the power of education. So I just wanted to start off, well done, but well done. So at this time, I'm going to bring up the stage uh, Merritt College Intertribal Student Union Club who's going to provide our land acknowledgement. Perished. But that ends with our generation of today. 
as we dismantle systemic racial oppression, fight for the safety and equality of black, brown, and indigenous people, preserve and reclaim our culture, language, and lands, we are making headway. Here in Jean territory, we have the Sogorite Land Trust, which is an urban indigenous woman-led <laughs> land trust, which facilitates the matriation or the return of indigenous land to indigenous people. And we have the Native American Health Center elevating the health and well-being of the most vulnerable in our community by providing comprehensive services. Thanks to the efforts of our indigenous communities and our allies, we are seeing our governments recognize the importance of land back around the world. Since 2010, when Obama signed the Pobo Settlement into law, the U.S. government has purchased and transferred roughly 3 million acres to tribal governments. But we still face many obstacles, and there is still so much work that needs to be done. So let's go beyond a land acknowledgement and take part in helping indigenous communities by learning about the community you live in and build respectful and effective partnerships with indigenous American communities. Indigenous peoples do not just exist in the past, we exist in the present and will continue to exist in the future. Land back, we are of this land. Agman, Agamana Kunai. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. So for those who are able, I'd ask you to rise and remain standing. We're going to have our first performance of the night, the national anthem by mother and daughter duo, Miss Jillian Del Rosario and Miss Jeannie Ramirez. So if you would stand for the national anthem.
And to begin these proceedings, I'm honored to introduce our platform guests. So I'm going to try to, hopefully I don't miss anybody, I'm going to try to get through everybody. Um, so on the platform today to lead the celebration are Oakland Mayor and Mayor College alumna, the Honorable Shane. We have our Toronto Community College District Board of Trustees President, the Honorable Diana Marie Del Pinto. We have our fearless leader. I'm not saying that because she hired me. Dr. Jeanette Jackson. Chancellor. Dr. Jackson. We have the Vice President of the Parapla Board of Trustees, the Honorable Will Swindler. We have another Chancellor of Chancellor, Trustee of the Parapla Board of Trustees, the Honorable Bill Rithrow. We have one of our newest trustees to the board, the Honorable Sweet Johannes. We have the Peralta Community College District Student Trustee and your Merit Student Body President, Lisa Hope. We have our Vice President of Instruction, Dr. Denise Richardson. We have our Classified Senate President, Ms. Mary Soul Chavez. <laughs> Representing the Merit Academic Senate, we have Professor Isela Santana. <laughs> I haven't seen him yet. Is Jacob Shafik? He is our president. Even if he's not here, we don't give it up for him. He's our President's Medallion recipient for tonight. We have your class valedictorian, Mr. Michael Vassar. We have your class salutatory, Pam Severson. Just a few more, and we like trying to get some graduation, I know. We have our Vice President of Administrative Services, Ms. Marie Amboy. We have the Dean of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, Dr. Chris Foster. We have our Dean of Allied Health and Public Safety. He's graduating, and so the family only had one car, and as you know, all of you got here early. And if you only have one mode of transportation, that meant that everybody got here early. So her and her brothers and sisters were there waiting for her mother to graduate. It was one of those ceremonies like we have for our Latinx students, for our lavender students, who are African American students, and this one was for the nursing students. They had their own little ceremony. So as the mother was going, getting ready, the kids were standing around, not really knowing what to do because they didn't want to graduation at college before. And so one of the faculty members came over and said, "Are you guys here waiting, you know, for someone to graduate?" And of course. The older daughter said, yes, our mother is graduating, and gave her mother's name. And then the faculty member said, oh, you're Hannah's kids. Why don't you sit right down in the front for the graduation? And she said, there's eight of us. All of us, we're going to take up the whole road. And she said, sure, sit there, sit there. You know, this is important, this is important. 
So they sat there, and just like you're doing right now, and had all the dignitaries get introduced, and then you had the speakers come out and say welcome. And finally, they got to the part where they start recognizing students. And so this young woman was sitting there, and she said they called up her mother's name. And they, unbeknownst to them, they awarded the mother the most inspirational student, which was voted on by all of the other students that were nursing students. So as her mother came up to the podium to accept her award, she started crying, and then all the eight kids started crying, and then the people in the audience started crying as the mother tried to explain how she had overcome to get there. She dropped out of school in the 10th grade. She didn't graduate from high school. She got married, she had six kids, got remarried, and had two more kids. She was a single mom with six kids who had really overcome a lot. Had worked on going back to school when her last child was in elementary school, passed the GED, and decided that she wanted to go to college. And what she could afford in those days, because it was free, community colleges were free, and we need to go back to that, but that's a different story. She was able to go through and graduate. I share that story with you because I know it resonates with at least one or two or more of you in the audience. You too have overcome a lot. You too have a story that you will share someday when you stand in my place or others like me. And you too will, what do they call it? Pull it forward. Pass it on. Tell your story. Never forget where you came from. Never be ashamed because it made you who you are. And I was that 18 year old looking at my mom across the stage. So I share that with you because I started from humble, humble beginnings. But through education, I stand before and address you today. Congratulations, class of 2020. Next, we have bringing greetings and a welcome from the Academic Senate, Professor Isela Senna. Good evening, Barrett College, graduates of class of 2023, family, and campus community. On behalf of our Senate President, Tom Renbarker, I am honored to stand before you today, our beautiful, proud, intelligent human beings ready to rock this world. With wisdom, vision, compassion, and positive energy. Merritt College serves the top 100% of our Oakland, Bay Area community and beyond. On behalf of all of my faculty colleagues, congratulations to each and every one of you. The simple fact that you are here in a cap and gown is a true testament of your grit, your ability to overcome, I am sure, many hardships. You may have shed some tears over the years, yet you stand here with conviction, or rather you sit here with conviction to soar high, to pave the path for all those brothers and sisters who need to follow you. On behalf of my fellow co colleagues, again, congratulations to each one of you. Walk tall, be kind, claim your space, and yes, Bring it on. Just enjoy this day. Okay, and 
next, bringing a welcome from the Merit College Classified Senate, Ms. Merit Sloan. Show us some love. Give me a little nerve. Show us some love. Greetings, everyone. Buenos dias. I'm sorry. Buenas tardes. I'm a little nervous. My name is Marisol, and I, I am the classified president at Mary College in the Love Class of 2015. It is my honor and pleasure to be in front of all of you in this special day. As a former student at Merit, I know the struggles you may all have faced, the sleepless nights, the struggling to keep up with the amount of units while trying to hold onto a job, caring enough for loved ones, raising children, all while trying to turn in your homework on time. Today, we're, today we open one of the many doors that will support and guide you for the rest of your journey. Whether that is pursuing a bachelor's degree, another associate's degree, going straight into the work world, or providing some, or proving something to yourself, today is the day to celebrate all of that and more. Today, you are the star of the show. Today, you get to dress up and show out. Today is all about you. As you sit here next to your chair, your professors, your school faculty and staff, and everyone that played a role in you making it here. We thank them for those lessons they taught us in class, as well as the title of class. The friendships that were created, the guidance that was provided. We also want to thank those that provided support at home, our partners, our husbands, our wives, our children, caretakers, caretakers, guardians, whomever they may be to you. We thank them for their efforts, for their support, and as well for their presence. You all have the ability to accomplish anything you set your mind on, and today is proof of that. Two years ago, this was days away from being a reality, and look at you now. You, you have set your mind on something, and you have accomplished it. Pat yourself on the back. You deserve it. Use tonight as a reminder of how good it feels to accomplish something that seemed impossible at times. Use that feeling to fuel your future, future endeavors. Today will not be the last time you feel this. I promise you that. As you get ready to close out your incredible journey at Merritt College, you made your way to your next adventure. Use the tools and skills and knowledge you have received from here to guide you and lead you to your goals. We, we were but a stepping stone in your journey and a whole path in front of you is waiting. And as a first generation student standing in front of you and a proud Mexicana, once again, I congratulate the class of 2023 and I hope to see all of you guys back at Merritt College. Congratulations. So now, I'm going to bring to the stage, as I said, she is the student trustee for the Toronto Community College District, but she's also your president. Student Body President, ASMC, Ms. Lisa Hogan. Here I am. Well, I'm honored to be here to encourage this 
um, graduating class of 2023, off with words of not wisdom, because I don't think I'm not wise, but just um, words from my heart that you can take with you as you embark on the next adventures in your life. Um, for some of you like me, your work is not finished. You'll be, you'll be transferring and moving on to do great things. But still, I want you to embrace and celebrate it today because this milestone is very, very, very important and you deserve to be celebrated. Merritt College is my home. Because I attended Merritt College part-time, off and on, it took me a very long time to graduate and transfer. And I wanted to give up on several of different occasions, but I did do. I overcame some of the most challenging setbacks during my educational journey um, here at Merritt, but I didn't get hit with the hardest until I transferred to UC Riverside. My mother passed away in 2018, the Friday before Mother's Day, while I was on break visiting her. So I had to return home after that and remove emotionally. And Mary College helped me to heal. It helped me to refocus. And it provided me with the space that I needed to pull myself together and get out of the sunken place. And I have successfully done just that. And I, <laughs> and I am thankful. <laughs> I'm thankful I had a home like Mary to help guide me where I am, where I'm at today here. <laughs> so scholars, I ask you to be proud that you are now all part of the Mary legacy. Be proud that your home college stands on the mission of putting students first. I recently had the opportunity, had the privilege of hearing Dr. Foster standing on that mission in a meeting. Just hearing her say the words, we put students first, it made me feel like I mattered at that particular time. She wasn't talking about me, but I felt like I mattered. And I thank you, Dr. Foster, for, for, for giving me that, and, and just for your commitment to the students at Mary. But scholars, it is now our time to go out and create a better world for the next generation. This community has changed so much over the years, and some of the changes are not in alignment with those who are most marginalized in this community, like poor people, children, and people that look like me. But people like us need to collaborate to change that. And of course, this work is not going to be easy, but collectively, we can do impossible things, and education is the way. Education is a tool. It is a tool that we use to learn and master skills. Education is a pathway to a better life. Education can also be used as a weapon to keep those without a threat. But your education is yours and yours alone. I ask each of you to use your education to create a better world for the human race. As humans, we are all interconnected. We are all on our own unique paths on this uncertain roller coaster we call life. We need one another to be willing to stand up for the common good. Even if you find yourself in a space where everyone else chooses to oppose, don't be afraid to speak up and advocate for what you feel is right. Be brave and be yourself. Most of all, love yourself. Love yourself. I encourage each of you, graduates, to be the change that you want to see. Remember to rest if you need to, just don't give up. Every single problem has a solution. And now, I want to thank Doris again for pushing me out of my comfort zone. I'm very much an introvert, so this, for me, being here on this platform is not, it does not come naturally for me. So I thank you, Doris, for seeing in me what I didn't need to see in myself. Thank you all. 
Thank all the people at Mary College, because each of you all are important. All of the people of, of the Peralta District, you are important too. Just like every student is important. And we are all family, but this is the Mary family. I say, I say, I say. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I gotta leave you with a quote. Education is our passport to the future. For tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it. That's, from, that's a quote by the great Malcolm X. Now I'm thinking. 